Today we start with a new chapter in the series of videos in the masterclass how to create realistic orchestral mockups. And the upcoming videos will all be about mixing. How do you mix orchestral music? Hi there, this is David, also known as Ghost Rider. I'm a Dutch composer and on my channel you can listen to my music and watch videos about how to create realistic orchestral mockups for film and video. So if you want to get better in that, in orchestration or other related stuff, then start now by subscribing and clicking that little bell. I got a tip from one of my followers and my first patron on Patreon, yes, I've got my first patron on Patreon and I'm really proud of that. Thank you for your support. Um, but this guy told me, David, your videos are awesome, but there is not much sound in them. I will do that. I will make more videos with sound in them. So first, let me be clear. I am not a professional mixing engineer. And you have to know that my philosophy is, and this is maybe a kind of strange one, I'm not sure, that if you have done all the steps that I've told you in the last videos, your music track, if you have composed it correctly and you made the good orchestration choices, it will mix itself for about 90%. So you don't have to do a lot of mixing for orchestral music because it will mix itself when you have done all the basic steps in a proper way. Keep that in mind. And I know that a lot of people disagree because a lot of people love to use plugins. But my philosophy is try to use as less plugins as possible. Only grab an EQ when you need it. Only grab a reverb plugin when you need it. And those two are probably the ones that you will grab most of the times. A compressor, stay away from a compressor as much as you can. Only grab to a compressor if it is really, really, really necessary. But otherwise, stay away from those compressors. Another plugin that you probably want to use a couple of times is a plugin for with. But keep in mind, use as less plugins as possible to mix your orchestral music. So let's dive again in our DAW. First we start with the MIDI track and then we go to our mixing template. All right, first, this is the MIDI template, the MIDI mockup that you should have by now. And if you haven't downloaded the project files, just go to the first video of this free masterclass, download the project files, download the weekly updated project file, follow me along through the videos until you are here when we start with the mixing. But before we start with the mixing, I would like to ask you to do this simple little thing. You have saved this MIDI mockup. When you have done that, then delete all the MIDI parts, just delete them, and save this file as a template file. In Logic, you can do that by going to here and then save as a template. Then when you start Logic again, you can start by using this template. So you don't have to do the panning, the timing, the EQ cleanup, the balancing. You don't have to do that over and over again. It is simply stuck in this template and that will save you a lot of time. You can start composing and everything is fine just right from the start. So just delete all the MIDI blocks, save it as a template, and then we continue now with our mixing part. I'm not sure how you normally mix your orchestral music tracks. I never mix the MIDI mockup. So what I do is export everything and export it as a audio file and then start from scratch by importing the audio files in a new file in Logic. In Logic, that's quite easy to do by just selecting a track, option E, then you have the option to export it. I always export it as a 24-bit file. Project files are also 48 kilohertz. Just export every MIDI track within this MIDI mockup as an audio file and then import it back again into a clean file. I know that a lot of people think you're not talking about buses, 
right? I, I, I haven't applied any buses to this template. That's true, because we're only working with a couple of tracks. These are not enormous amount of tracks. If I create, if I write a track, a composition that consists out of 80 tracks, yes, then I will do buses. But for the sake of simplicity in this masterclass, it's just a beginner masterclass. I'm not going to talk about buses. So I have exported all the separate tracks, all the separate tracks as audio files. All right, so when you have exported all the MIDI tracks and imported back again into a clean logic file or in a new file in Cubase, Reaper, uh, Ableton, whatever you use, you will see again that I have uh, used the same colors, cut away every part with no audio in it. Another thing that I always do is when I have done that is select all these uh, uh, tracks and make sure that there is a fade in curve of 10 and a fade out curve of 10. And you can see them because they are really small, but here you will see a small fade in curve. Here you will see a two, here you will see a two. So every track has a fade in curve and a fade out curve of 10. Why do I do this? Because sometimes you have uh, some pops and clicks and somebody showed me this little trick and I have incorporated that in my workflow. So import all the tracks, cut away the parts that has no audio in them, then color them nicely just like you have done when you were composing and then apply a fade in and a fade out to every single piece of audio that's in the tracks. All right, so when we go to our mixing panel, I just want to show you a couple of plugins which I think that are really neat and I will be talking about in this video before I start about talking about all the other plugins that I have used in, but those are for the upcoming videos. One is this one, the Foxengo Span plugin. It's a free plugin and this is a really awesome plugin which I really use a lot during, comp during composing but also during mixing. Why? Because when you are listening to a track you can see where the frequencies are of your track and where they are kind of massive or, or not and uh, where it's thin or not. So that will give you some ideas about how to maybe mix your music track or even go back to your composing, to your composition to fix a couple of things. And ideally you want to have a broad, thick range of all those frequency ranges. The orchestra normally doesn't have a enormous low range here and it also doesn't have an enormous high range here. So keep that in mind. I see a lot of people during the mixing stage um, put some kind of sub sound, sub boom sound in it to fatten up the low end. That is not something that is in a normal orchestra. Keep that in mind. The Foxengo Span, get it, use it. It will give you some guidance how good your track is balanced. So the second plugin, that's, that's a paid one. And it's up to you if you want to invest in it and if you want to use it. It is not a must have plugin, but it is one that will give you a lot of details about your mixing project, about your production. And the one that I am talking about is Isotope Inside. This is a plugin with a lot of detailed information and a lot of possibilities to do many, many analysis. So what am I talking about? You have for your music production a couple of things that you can look at. You can look at your dynamic meters. You can look at a dynamic analysis, um, which frequencies and the loudness of them the frequency levels, which one are pretty dominant and which are very quiet. Uh, you can have um, some insight in your headroom warning. Um, if you want to know more about your stereo analysis or your stereo mixdown, everything is 
available in this pretty neat plugin, which I use a lot, but that's up to you if you want to invest in this one. All right, the third plugin that I would like to talk about in this first video about how to mix orchestral music and this music track show opener in particular, that is this one. And this is uh, available in the Isotope Ozone 7 or Plus. And this is the Imager, uh, the Isotope Ozone 7 Imager. Why do I use this one? Well, actually this is Normally this is for uh, the master the master stage of your track but I use it because one important thing is that you need to do when you mix a track is mixing it in mono start mixing your music in mono please do that so it will sound totally different but it's very important cuz when everything in your track if you can hear everything in your track that is getting through this little this little beam of frequencies then you have done a really good job so this plugin i use to get my my music track in mono there are many many plugins that will do that you don't need the isotope ozone 7 imager to do that but because i also use this one and some other stuff from Isotope Ozone for my mastering. This is a really good, neat plugin to use that too in your mixing production. So these three plugins are the plugins that I always use as some sort of reference, as some sort of analysis plugins during my mixing. The Span Foxengo, the Isotope Insight and the Isotope Ozone Imager. That is enough for this video. Grab those plugins if you want them. Certainly the Span Foxengo, cause that one is free. Start using that. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate that you took the time to watch this video. And if, you, if it has any value to you, hit that like button, share it on your social media, tell your friends, your family, everybody that you know that is interested in writing orchestral music that this free masterclass is available and that you can rebuild this music track show opener. And I will see you next Thursday with another video about mixing.